hello friends in this video we will study uh, the gib very first paper that is the principle and practices banking unit 2 and the unit name is the banking regulation so friends see in detail what is the banking regulation how banking sector in the india is regulated see very first you must know the banking regulation is a uh, in india is regulated by the rbi so friends see some introduction part uh, in india it is regulated by rbi banking according to banking regulation act 1949 you have to remember that is banking regulation act 1949 so friends see in the some introductory part what they have given they have given that in united kingdom in united kingdom the banks are regulated by the bank of england similarly in india banks are regulated by the rbi act 19 uh, rbi act 1934 and the banking regulation act for 1949 so uh, you have to remember two points here so see, in the introduction part they have given a lot of things but uh, that is not important right so just remember here in india how the banks are regulated see according to rbi act 1934 and according to banking regulation act 1949 banking sector is regulated in india that is you have to remember only the highlighted part okay next we will move to the next slide uh, see friends uh, after that what you have to uh, important thing is the uh, rbi's con uh, constitution and objective how how rbi is being constituted and what are the objectives of the rbi so uh, see uh, rbi was constituted under the rbi act 1934 that we all know right being a banker and important thing you should remember that rbi has started functioning on 1st of april 1935 that means act is enacted uh, before one year and after that one year that is on uh, f since the uh, 1st april 1935 rbi has started its functioning so friends remember uh, that's why we are uh, t uh, having our financial year uh, starting from the 1st of april because why because rbi started functioning on the 1st april 1935 okay uh, now we will move to the next page see friends uh, here uh, RBI is a state owned institution how RBI is constituted uh, in this uh, we will uh, see in detail uh, see RBI is a uh, state owned institution that means it is owned by the government that is state owned like a public sector banks uh, under the RBI act under the RBI act how the RBI act is uh, transferred to the uh, state government see according to the transfer of public ownership act that is 1948 that means in the 1948 the RBI becomes the part of the uh, central government that is the state government so under the transfer of public ownership act 1948 this act empowers central government that is union government in consultation with the RBI governor to issue the direction to RBI considering uh, in the public interest that means in practical who is the actual owner of uh, the RBI or who can direct the RBI is this union government that means central government with consultation with the government can direct any uh, guidelines to the uh, RBI right okay fine now next what is important see friends how RBI is structured see RBI has one governor and RBI has a four deputy governor along with that RBI has a 12 directors and their director the 12 directors are nominated by the union government that means indirectly you can say uh, the whole rbi is controlled by indirectly by the central government also there are four four other director one each from the local board so this is the basic structure of the rbi you just remember here rbi has a four deputy governors and the 12 director nominated by the union government okay now uh, what is the main objective of RBI? What is function of RBI? What is main objective of the RBI? See, uh, very first is the to, ma to maintain the monetary stability, second to maintain the financial stability, third to maintain the payment system, effective payment system for RTGS, NEFT. Next is the ensure the credit allocation by the financial system. Next is the regulate the overall volume of monetary and credit in the economy and also promote the development of financial market so these are some important objective in this uh, unit in this uh, chapter we have to study all these in detail so let's move to the next see friends here 
what are the uh, main roles and functions of RBI we have listed out now very first we have to see the monetary authority we know uh, if they are asking in the in your GIB exam RBI is a, which of the following is the monetary authority you should know that RBI is the monetary authority they may give option like a CB IRDA right so this type of questions are generally in the examination so remember here one point you have to remember RBI is the monetary authority and RBI uh, monet how the monetary policy is decided I want to tell you here important uh, it is a biannual policy it is a uh, that means once in a uh, twice in the year two times in the year uh, the policy is uh, given by the RBI so remember here uh, why the monetary policy that is uh, why the RBI is the monetary authority why see friends to maintain the stable inflation that means prices of the uh, necessary goods should not be go high that means to maintain the proper inflation uh, the monetary authority RBI act as a monetary authority and how that inflation is controlled in the previous unit if you have gone through the previous chapter I have detailed explain how the RBI maintains the monetary authority that means using CRR using SLR RBI can absorb money or can uh, lend um, increase the liquidity in the market using the CRR and SLR the, in this fashion RBI can control the monetary uh, act as a monetary authority now so we'll see in detail see friends in the next page what they are saying see uh, in this uh, actually see friends in this uh, chapter they have given lot of information and the same thing they are repeating repeating five six times so I think it is not important to just read the same thing again and that's why I have used a highlighter so that you can come to know which points are important regarding with the point of your examination so free uh, friends see the main objective of the monetary policy why monetary policy is needed right now uh, again the same thing maintaining the price stability ensuring the adequate flow of the credit to the productive sectors uh, that is mainly important for the credit growth there is economic growth and the financial stability again they are repeating the same things so they will not frame a question based on that so we'll move to the next see important is uh, rbi uses several direct and indirect instrument in the formulation and implementation of the monetary policy that is very important how how they can frame a question here see friends they will give which of the following is the uh, direct instrument used by rbi used by rbi for the implementation of the monetary policy and in that they will give uh, some example like uh, crr slr uh, repo rate reverse repo rate bank rate so from that you have to choose the correct option one or two which is the correct option so in this uh, we will see the detail what are the direct instrument used to control the or to use the implementation of the monetary policy so friends here in a direct instrument user to uh, for the uh, implementation of the monetary policy are very first is the CRR in the previous unit I have already explained the CRR what is CRR how C uh, CRR is maintained how SLR is maintained and uh, what are the necessary uh, guidelines of the RBI see friends uh, actually CRR means I have already told you there is the uh, amounts of funds or we can say cash uh, need to kept with the RBI it is mandatory for the scheduled commercial banks right remember for the scheduled commercial bank it is mandatory uh, that is the CRR now see uh, there are two uh, direct instrument used for the monetary policy impl implementation very first is the CRR and second is the SLR that is the statutory liquidity ratio okay now remember one important thing here uh, the section 42 one section 42 one of the RBI Act according to the section 42 one of the RBI Act it is necessary to maintain the CRR and the SLR another thing the RBI does not play and uh, does not pay an interest on the CRR maintained by scheduled commercial banks with effect from the fortnight beginning March 31st of 2007 that means how the question can be framed here they will give one sentence like uh, RBI pays 2% interest on the CRR true or false we may get confused so remember RBI does not pay any interest on the CRR remember since when since uh, 2007 RBI does not pay interest on the CRR before it was paying so you right now you have to just remember right now RBI does not pay any interest on the CRR okay now we will move to the next and remember one important thing here uh, 
SCB that is SCB that means a scheduled commercial bank the scheduled commercial banks are required to maintain CRR they may ask a question like that see uh, which of the following are mandatory as per the RBI to maintain the CRRR option first is the uh, cooperative banks primary credit society then RRB and last they will give a scheduled commercial bank to answer should be scheduled commercial banks have a mandatory according to RBI to maintain the CRR so these are some important questions that can be from uh, this okay now we move to the next see if what if what if the uh, scheduled commercial bank does not maintain does not maintain if uh, the uh, CRR then what happen see friends according to RBI it is mandatory so that's why if uh, any bank is not maintaining any bank means what which bank it is this scheduled commercial bank what are the scheduled commercial bank you should know which are included in the second schedule of the RBI Act 1934 that is called as the scheduled commercial banks now see here uh, see how CRR is maintained and what if the CRR is not maintained what is the penalty for that see CRR requirement on a daily basis which is uh, pre uh, presently 95 percent of the total CRR requirement M means see here if uh, uh, suppose a SBI has a deposit of uh, 100 crore and a CRR limit is 4 percent that means uh, 4 crores of the CRR should be maintained by the state bank of India if you fail to maintain that CRR that means 95 percent of the 4 crore that is need to be maintained right that is 95 percent of the CRR you need to maintain if you fail to maintain the 95 percent of the CRR there are there is a penalty by RBI that means what is penalty see here penal interest will be lived for the day that the 3 percent per annum above the bank rate on the amount by which the uh, amount actually maintained falls short for the prescribed minimum for that day that means here how can see suppose uh, CRR you have 100 crores of deposit and you need to maintain a CRR of 4 if you miss the uh, if you maintain only 3 crores of CRR then you are missing CRR by 1 crore right that's why on that 1 crore you have to pay an interest to RBI that is penal interest which should be bank rate plus 3 percent on annual basis that means uh, suppose you are having a, a bank rate of uh, 10 percent then that means to RBI you have to uh, pay a penal interest as a 13 percent that means plus 3 you have to pay remember this is very very important for your examination plus 3 you have to pay and that should be uh, annual interest paid on daily basis okay now uh, if a short fall continues for the next succeeding day if it is continued for the next day also then the penal interest will be recovered at the rate of five percent per annum above the bank rate that means you come to know if it is for one day you are delay uh, you are not maintaining crr there will be plus three percent penalty if for more than one day there will be five percent plus on the bank rate that will be penalty okay now i think you have uh, cleared what is the actually the penalty on the if a banks that is scheduled commercial banks are not maintaining the crr another uh, one important thing here see in the second what they are saying crr on the average basis during a fortnight panel interest will be lived as the subsection 3 of the 40 section 42 of the rbi act that is that is not important actually just you have to remember what if for one day it is a bank rate plus uh, three percent and for second day it is blank bank rate plus the five percent just remember that okay now next see what is the uh, what is the statutory liquidity ratio another is the what is the next uh, method to uh, implement the monetary policy is the slr friends i have already told what is slr again i will told you see slr is the some amount that uh, bank need to keep with rbi in the form of securities in the form of securities cash or gold they have option that you can keep in the form of cash uh, in the form of gold or in the form of security whereas in case of crr you need to keep it to, uh, in in the form of funds that is mainly in cash but in slr you have uh, facility that you can uh, keep with rbi like uh, in the form of cash in the form of gold or any government securities another thing remember uh, yes about slr uh, it is some percentage of your net time and demand liabilities that is NDTL 
right it is prescribed by the rbi so here what you have to remember that uh, slr can be kept in the form of cash gold or the uh, investment in the government securities okay now next see here uh, uh, penalty what if the uh, slr is not maintained the see remember friends short trick here penalty on the slr and clr are almost same so uh, same uh, for the one day it is a bank rate plus 3 percent and for uh, next day it is a bank rate plus 5 percent so i think you have cleared uh, voila, what uh, the penalty on the slr also that means if you know CLR, then you can easily know slr because it is almost same now see uh, what is the refinance facility what is the refinance facility uh, of the rbi see refinance what is mean by refinance uh, you must know what is refinance if suppose you know, the bank your bank has given loan to a person uh, suppose uh, see suppose sbi your bank is sbi and the sbi has given loan to uh, vijay malya right and uh, of uh, 500 crores if uh, in 500 crores vijay malya is not able to run his business then what sbi will do sbi again will uh, lend 100 crores and say now you can at least run your business and give uh, back our money right so that is called as the refinance that facility is also provided by the rbi rbi finances to the bank so that bank can lend money to the uh, respected borrowers that is called as the refinance now what is the uh, indirect instrument these are the instrument would, uh, which we have uh, seen to implement the monetary policy mainly uh, crr and the slr that are two instrument crr slr and the refinance now uh, next is the uh, in indirect instrument used for the monetary policy implementation of the monetary policy see what are the indirect instrument that you have to list out first very first is the lef that is liquidity adjustment facility second is the repo rate reverse repo rate third is the your uh, open market operation fifth is your uh, msf sixth is the bank rate and last is the mss so that is that are the, you have to remember the list because they can give which are the following are the indirect instrument so you should not be get confused you have to remember that right so okay now what is the very first it is the indirect instrument for the monetary policy is the liquidity adjustment facility see friends uh, it consists of the daily infusion or absorption of liquidity on a purchase basis or repurchase basis uh, through the repo rate or the reverse repo rate see friends what is the repo rate repo rate means what the uh, rate at which rbi lends money to the bank that means uh, the bank are availing loan from the rbi at the rate it is called as the repo rate and what is reverse repo rate it is just opposite of that it is reverse of that that means rbi bank having excess of cash bank having excess of cash that is lent towards the rbi rbi is not actually borrowing money from the banks rbi has a lot of cash right so here you have to uh, remember the sentence how it is framed the excess of the cash with the banks as given to the rbi so that in the uh, in that case that is the reverse repo rate is applied and on that rate uh, on with the with that rate rbi uh, lend uh, rbi gives some interest to the banks so it is benefit to the banks if they are having excess cash they can lend with the rbi so uh, they can earn the interest so basic principle is this about the repo rate and the reverse repo rate so these two are used for the uh, liquidity adjustment what is mean by liquidity liquidity is what is liquidity basically friends what is liquid liquid means what how liquid flow liquid is uh, flowing very uh, fast and easily right so according to rbi the cash flow should be uh, fast and easy and smooth so uh, to avoid inflation there should be a good cash flow so that is the uh, liquid cash flow that is the uh, adjective user is here so is in simple words uh, liquidity is nothing but the the cash should be flowed easily right cash should flow easily that is whenever it is needed it should be available and when it is surplus it should be lent right so that is called as the easy liquidity right that means to adjust that liquidity there are uh, repo rate and the reverse repo rates are used by rbi so okay we come to know what is liquidity adjustment facility lf now see second is the uh, reverse repo rate what is reverse repo rate i have already explained right uh, repo rate and reverse rate uh, repo rate i have already explained next is the open market operation see friends open market operation that is omo see 
uh, outright sales purchase of the government security in addition to LF it is used to determine the level of liquidity over the medium term very very important that means see here friends uh, when see uh, we are using repo rate and the reverse repo rate very for a very short time right but you have to uh, determine the liquidity over a medium term you must use the instrument called as the open market instrument and since 2012 rbi has been using this instrument as a pure LAF liquidity instrument that is very very important that means question can frame like uh, for the uh, medium term uh, liquidity adjustment which instrument should be used so you should know open market instrument should be used so in this fashion they can ask the question next msf that is the marginal standing facility see friends msf was introduced under the scheduled commercial banks can borrow very important remember see here again the word scheduled commercial bank which bank only the scheduled commercial bank msf was introduced uh, under which the scheduled commercial banks can borrow even uh, overnight that means overnight at the description up to two percent of their net time demand time uh, net demand time liability ndtl right that is the net demand and time liabilities at a hundred basis point that you just remember here one point here uh, what is msf that is that means a scheduled commercial bank can borrow for a night that means overnight uh, up to the two percent of their ndtl you have to remember what you have to remember that means a uh, scheduled commercial banks can borrow overnight up to two percent of ndtl two percent of ndtl is very very important mcq can be framed from that only so uh, that is that is all about the msf now we will move to the next slide see friends we have already uh, studied uh, here now we will move to the omo that is the open <coughs> that is the open market operation what is open market operation that is the indirect instrument see here uh, outright sales and purchase of the government security in addition to lf that we have already studied that how the uh, determine the level of liquidity over the medium term um, we have studied m uh, omo we have studied msf now target is what the slide in this uh, the it is uh, repeated in the last slide i have told you how msf is maintained that is uh, scheduled commercial banks are borrowing two percent of ndtl okay see uh, now what is m in the msf in the msf what amount you should borrow the minimum request if you want to borrow that if you are a scheduled commercial bank remember all public sector banks are scheduled commercial banks if uh, minimum request size should be one crore under msf he, see here is the question framing chances are very high minimum size is one crore and maximum is multiple of one crore you should remember that sentence next is the uh, indirect instrument for the monetary policy is the bank rate see friends in the bank rate what is bank rate see uh, here uh, in the bank what is bank rate actually see uh, it is the rate it is the rate at which rbi is ready to buy or re-discount bill of exchange or other commercial papers it is also signals the medium term stance of the monetary policy that means it is also again the medium term stability instrument what bank rate okay and what is short term it is uh, crr and the slr so friends remember here uh, what is a bank rate it is the rate at which reserve bank of india is ready to buy or discount okay okay fine that is the uh, bank rate next is the uh, market stabilization scheme that is also very very important friends what is the market stabilization scheme in 2004 that scheme has been launched and it was introduced for uh, issuing the treasury bills it was introduced for issuing t bills very very important market they can ask uh, market stabilization scheme was introduced for issuing treasury bills commercial paper uh, right, like uh, other uh, certificate of deposit you should uh, remember it is mainly only for the uh, treasury bills so in this way they can from the uh, framing the questions so in 2004 mssr that is market stabilization scheme was introduced for the issuing the treasury bills now see remember here uh, what is mss actually it is used to absorb the liquidity remember here is the another mcq 
why market stabilization scheme is uh, implemented why it is being used to absorb the excess liquidity what happen if excess liquidity in the market there will be rise in the inflation so to control the inflation excess liquidity is absorbed and for that mss scheme is used so just remember that um, uh, my words right and the rate of interest the rate of interest on the wma is linked to uh, to the repo rate remember here the sentence is a very important the rate of interest on the wma is linked to repo rate they may ask uh, the rate of interest of wma is linked to repo rate reverse repo rate bank rate slr csr so you may remember there are chances of framing the question what is the answer should be the repo rate the rate of interest on the wma what is wma that is ways and means of advance ways and means of advance okay now what is the next point here see next function of the rbi is the issuer of the currency that we all know that rbi issues the currency nothing new in that right so you one thing only you have to remember one rupees note it is it is issued or can say it is signed by the finance secretary not the rbi governor so rbi does not issue all only uh, except the one rupees note one rupees note is not uh, issued by the rbi okay now next see okay uh, rbi is the authority to issue notes up to the rupees of 10000 uh, remember friend this is also very very important Ar uh, up to what uh, limit of maximum note rbi can issue answer is the uh, up to 10000 uh, see uh, uh, according to my information uh, around 19 in 1978 there was a note of 10000 rupees also in the market so after that uh, in 1978 indira gandhi has uh, stopped the 10 rupees note of the 10000 rupees that is first uh, demonetization in india okay uh, now uh, see uh, coins in the circulation at a present are uh, we know that 50 paisa 1 rupees to that is not important actually uh, but the uh, line is important here see Uh, 50 paise coin can be used to pay a settled or uh, sum not exceeding 10 rupees that means if you are uh, if you want to give someone a uh, 10 rupees you, you uh, maximum 50 paise coin can give is only a uh, 10 rupees you cannot give more than 10 rupees uh, per 50 paise coin and uh, for uh, that 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 sentence is last sentence is important maximum limit for a uh, 50 paise coin is 10 rupees that means uh, 20 coins you can have at a time maximum for the uh, settlement okay now rbi also act as the debt manager to the government i have already explained in the previous unit how rbi act as the debt manager they are repeating repeating in the same things lot of times friends there is no new things in there the lot of things are repeating why how rbi is act as the uh, debt manager to the government rbi's role is managing the government's banking transaction they are be also manage the government's account that are uh, all the basic things i uh, will move to the next slide right now see friends rbi also act as a banker to banks right uh, why because uh, rbi also help in the uh, clearing is uh, clearing and settlement fund transfer that is nft rts enabling bank for maintaining their accounts like uh, we are all banks having account with the rbi for clr and slr then uh, acting as a lender of the last resort rbi act as a last resort if any ba any bank fail and no other bank is helping for the overnight money call money notice money then rbi act as the last resort okay that i have already explained in the previous uh, video and the previous unit uh, they are just repeating here next is the uh, regulator of the banking system rbi act as the regulator of the banking system that we all know now we'll move to the next c rbi is uh, regulatory role how rbi is uh, regulating that all they have repeated same things so according to 1949 rbi regulation act rbi is regulating and rbi act 1934 now see friends uh, what is the corporate governance uh, rbi having a corporate governance here one important line is here here they can frame a question see uh, rbi policy rbi reserve bank of india's policy objective is to ensure high quality corporate governance in the banks okay rbi has issued a stipulating fit and a proper criteria for the director of the bank so last time they have asked a question that which criteria has been set by rbi for the director of the bank the answer is fit and proper remember friends remember very very important fit and proper criteria is uh, for the directors of the banks 
now see uh, reserve bank of india has also power what reserve bank of india has also power to appoint the additional director on the board of the banking company now uh, rbi also act as the manager for the foreign foreign exchange that is the rbi's function that we all know uh, see uh, remember here how rbi uh, manages the uh, forex uh, using the fema that is uh, foreign exchange management act 1999 uh, before fema it was a fera f e r a uh that is forex uh, uh foreign exchange regulation act fera fera was there before right now it become a fema in 1999 so okay that's what that's it about uh, this now see in the next slide see friends uh investing investing in a foreign asset investing in the forex you can say investing in the foreign asset rbi is guided by the three principles very first is the safety second is the liquidity and third is the return so this type of question they can from which are the three principle by which rbi is guided for the forex or the foreign asset first is the safety second is the liquidity and third is the return that you have to remember so this type of question is generally asked next uh, what is the regulator and so and supervisor of payment and settlement rbi also act as the regulator and supervisor in the payment and settlement i have already explained in the previous video let's remember one important point here payment and settlement act is there there is a payment and settlement act 2007 that is called as the pss act now see uh, see here what you have to remember only which network is used uh, by the rbi so answer is the most they are most operating on the security platform of the indian financial network that is the remember indian financial network is used by rbi that means uh, in short it is also called as the called as the in fin et that is in fin et that is indian financial network in fin et indian financial network you have to remember that's it you have to remember for a retail payment system that is nft is used and for large value we can we know that is rtgs is used that is no new things they are uh, giving here now see friends what is next rbi also uh, do the role of development that means how rbi is uh, helping in the development role see friends uh, since uh, our uh, independence uh, in uh, 1947 uh, rbi is uh, after the nationalization of rbi that is uh, transfer of ownership act in the 1949 rbi has started the main important that is the development role also but uh, so till now what rbi has done uh, see uh, deposit insurance and credit guarantee corporation has been set up by the rbi unit trust of india in 1964 it is the first mutual fund of the company that is set by rbi then uh, idbi is an in 1964 is set by the rbi for the industrial uh, finance remember friends uh, in 1964 uh, rbi that is idbi is the subsidiary of the rbi after that it become the uh, full fledged commercial bank uh, right now it is the private sector bank so most worst uh, uh, journey of the idbi is uh, starting from the highest peak that is the subsidiary of the rbi uh, right now it is become a private sector bank so okay uh, we know the history of rbi that is just uh, for your information and that means idbi is also set by the rbi for the development of the industries uh next is the nabard is has been said next is the discount and finance house uh, of india the uh, national housing bank and the security trading corporation of india has been said so you don't need to remember the list just you can go through it remember here one important point uh, according to di uh, cgc uh, the insurance paid up to the 5 lakh rupees only uh, up to 5 lakh rupees they are paying the insurance before uh, it was a uh, 1 lakh rupees but uh, recently rbi has uh, increased that insurance uh, that because the feeling of uh, in the banking failure is uh, uh, now increasing after the pmc and s bank that's why the insurance is increased up to the 5 lakh rupees by the dicgc remember here next see friends so what is the next uh, direct credit for lending to priority sector and the weaker section that we all know rbi has a different uh, criteria that is priority sector lending should be there that means to the weaker section self help group right so basically 
that like agriculture should be 18 percent of your total advance msme should be there so different types they have uh, mentioned here so no need to go in detail one important thing just read here uh, the lead bank scheme you should uh, know what is a lead bank scheme that's why i am uh, telling uh, to all of you remember here what is lead bank according to uh, lead bank is the uh, a commercial bank is designated as a lead bank uh, in each district of the country this is responsible for the ensuring the banking development in the district that means what happened actually is here uh, what is lead bank scheme it means uh, in every district in every district suppose i belong to a district of a right and in my uh, district suppose a central bank is allocated as the my lead bank so central bank will focus uh, in my district on more lending and development that is the thing but the basic uh, lead bank scheme that is only designated designation but uh, de they are designating a bank to for a particular district you are a lead bank you do the your uh, more uh, lending here indirect okay uh, next c what is the uh, specific sector refinance are we also do the refinance i have already told you uh, i have already told in the previous slides next is the strength strengthening the support strengthening and the supporting the small local banks i will uh, that we all know rbi how support to the local banks rbi also uh, very uh, take a, doing the initiative in the financial inclusion now uh, see friends here uh, regulatory restrictions on lending that is very very important what are the restrictions imposed by rbi on banks for the lending according to the bra that is banking regulation act 1949 see friends here uh, there should be no advance or loan can be granted against the security of the bank's own share or share of the company that is common sense you cannot lend money against your own shares second the bank can hold shares in the company no bank can hold a shares in the company provided what uh, a pledge or a mortgage in excess of the limit of 30% paid up capital of that company or 30% paid up capital of the reserves of the bank that means uh, if bank want to purchase if uh, suppose uh, sbi want to purchase in the amazon and amazon having a uh, capital of 100 crore so sbi cannot invest more than 30 crore right similarly sbi's capital is also 100 crore so sbi cannot in, invest in uh, in the amazon of up to 30 crore that means uh, you come to know what is the basic vice versa 30 uh, percent is the limit 30 percent of the uh, capital or 30 percent of the surplus and reserve so okay it's fine with you now see and another thing is the uh, uh, see here in the next slide you can you see the management of which uh, man director or the manager of the bank is interested it means uh, there are also some restrictions on the uh, directors because uh, no director can grant a loan to their own uh, relative now see friends uh, some important no bank can grant loan against their uh, cd certificate of deposits then indian uh, depository receipts right next uh, bank should uh, desist from sanctioning loans against their yeah, FD issued by other bank. <laughs> Remember here, if you are working in a uh, central bank, if you are working in central bank and customer approaches you with a FD uh, in the SBI, you cannot give loan against that FD, right? That means the simple thing, uh, very practical and interesting. No uh, bank cannot uh, sanction loan against the FD of other banks. Now, no loan should be sanctioned by banks to whom the directors in which the the director of the bank having some interest it is but obvious next is the relative of the bank director uh, that i have already told you next uh, the exposure ceiling that line is very important friends last line the exposure ceiling limits would be 15 percent of the capital funds in case of single borrower and 40 percent capital in parts of uh, group borrower very 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 important last line see friends if you want to lend money uh, to a single borrower it should be 15 percent of the paid up capital if your uh, bank having 100 uh, paid up capital then you can lend up to the uh, sing to single borrower only 15 rupees and uh, to group borrower that is only up to the 40 rupees so that is the uh, criteria they have to, you have to remember a maximum is a 15 percent uh, you can lend to the single borrower and the 40 percent to the uh, group borrower now next see here uh, in the next what they are saying uh, 
uh, inclusion of urban cooperative banks in the second schedule to the reserve bank of india 1934 very very important friends see uh, before 2013 before 2013 the urban cooperative banks was not part of the schedule of commercial bank but uh, in 2013 rbi come to know that uh, we should uh, include the, uh, the urban cooperative banks in the schedule commercial bank so that people will more believe in the urban cooperative banks the result is uh, not good because recently the urban cooperative bank uh, pmc bank has been lapsed so okay friends see how they have uh, uh, included in the schedule commercial banks what are the criteria set by the rbi to include urban cooperative banks in the schedule commercial banks see very first is the uh dtl should not be less than 750 crore for the one year dtl means uh, uh, demand time liability second is the crar should not be uh, it should be a minimum 12% that means maximum it should not be less than 12% continuous net profit uh, for the three years gross npa should not exceed 5% it should be complying with the all regulation that is clr slr and no major majority or supervisory concern is there so that are the basic criteria you should remember uh, first first criteria that is uh, the uh, uh, 750 crore that is a dtl of not less than uh, 750 crore and uh, the uh, continuous net profit for the previous 3 year and crar should be 12% so okay in this fashion almost we have completed uh, second unit of your uh, uh, jib uh, principal uh, that is uh, unit is second now see friends after that we will see some uh, knowledge how you have studied uh, whether you are able to do the answers or not see uh, we have what they are saying check your progress with the true or false very first rbi is the regulator of the banks and securities market in india see friends rbi is regulator of bank it is okay but it is not the uh, regulator of the security market in india right who is the cb is the regulator in the security market in india so very first answer first is the uh, wrong now uh, next see rbi started functioning from 1934 uh, and onwards so it is not true uh, actually in 1934 rbi act was, was enacted and in 1935 first april 1935 rbi started functioning so second is also false now see uh, rbi maintains financial stability of the financial institution in india it is true uh, notes uh, in the denomination from rupees 1 to 1000 are issued by rbi so it is not uh, true because for rupees 1 uh, rupees note is issued by the finance secretary RBI appoints a CEO of a private sector bank it is a true uh, it is not a direct appointment but it is just approval so it is a true next uh, RBI has no power to amalgate weaker banks into stronger banks it is a uh, wrong because recently RBI has uh, amalgamated uh, how the Lakshmi Vilas bank right so it is false next is the credit authorization and the consortium to of finance scheme of rbi uh, are still mandatory for the commercial banks in india so this is false friends uh, credit consortium that means what happened in the previously what was there if you want to lend a money uh, to a borrower more than 1 crore you need to take the permission from the rbi that is called as the credit authorization so that scheme was rbi has stopped right so uh, this is not true right now it is not in work that is not in functioning right now so it is not the scheme is not uh, there right now h what is the h c french uh, rbi currently draws its power of regulating exchange control from fera 1973 i have already told you in the previous slide that the fera has been replaced by fema fera there was a act called as the foreign exchange regulatory uh, that is 1973 that is now replaced by uh, fema fema 1999 foreign exchange management act okay now see next all scheduled banks branches can handle foreign exchange transaction how can all bank branches handle there are only specified department forex department so it is false next slr is lower than crr remember friend this is false slr is never uh, less than the crr you can remember Uh, right currently i think uh, yeah, crr is some um, 3.5 and slr is more than definitely more than that it is common sense because it is uh, kept in only in the form of cash and it can be kept in the form of cash gold and government securities right 
so okay now we'll move to the k what is k they are saying as there is no sub target for ssi sector it does not compromise priority sector so what is a ssi that is a small scale uh, industries there is no uh, uh, sub target there is no target for the ssi uh, it does not compromise priority sector. it is false uh, there will be a target for the priority sector uh, what is next is the uh, for inclusion for the purpose of inclusion of ucb in the second uh, second schedule of the rbi act 1934 primary cooperative banks should have demand and time liability detail of the not less than 750 crore on a continuous basis for one year that is true that is true okay and now what is next slide is what about uh, see what about next slide is uh, filling the blanks i think uh, this is very easy so let's complete let's complete don't uh, we will complete Indian banking system is regulated in uh, terms of provisions of RBI Act 1934 and the uh, 19 that, uh, 1949 uh, BRA that is Banking Regulation Act. Next in US and UK which is the regulator in a uh, see in USA there is a Federal Reserve Board and in UK there is a uh, Bank of England. See RBI is a digest owned institution RBI is state owned institution obviously RBI owner of the RBI is state government that is union government. Uh, D. The new and reissuable notes are stored in Dajash. Where the notes are stored? In currency chest and uh, maintained by bank as the agent of RBI. Simple. Next, uh, what is the uh, what is they are saying? Uh, G. A decrease in the bank rate is likely to lead Dajash in, in interest rate of the bank. If a bank rate has been decreased, the interest rate will also be decreased. Uh, it is directly proportional. Now, friends, uh, see uh, in H what they are saying: monetary and credit policy is issued by RBI for each two uh, for each for each year two times. They have already explained to you in the previous slides. Now, last of, uh, question is over here: uh, to control inflation, uh, to control the inflation in the economy, RBI can increase one or more these mandatory tools crr slr and the bank rate remember there are three tools used by rbi to maintain the mainly uh, inflation that is the crr slr and the bank rate so this was uh, we have completed module uh, a of your uh, module a and unit two that is unit second unit we have completed of your gib so uh, friends uh, thank you for uh, watching the video and also don't forget to share this video thank you friends